Peter. Um, what I want to know is, well, what's hot in Spain? Um, I think what's hot is that Spain isn't as hot as people think it is. <laughs> I think, you know, yes, it's a country we go on holiday. Yes, the weather is often great, but it's a very big country and it's very diverse. So you've got areas that are warm, you've got areas that are cool, you've got areas that are hot. And I think you, you've got wine styles that reflect that. For, so, for example, in Galicia in the northwest, it's much more of a maritime Atlantic climate. You've got lovely, fresh, fragrant white wines. Uh, Rioja we all know, but around Rioja there's, there's areas like Navarra, Samontano, and, and again they're not baking hot, they're warm, so you get these lovely generous wines, but they still have freshness. So I understand uh, wines from Spain been working very hard on the sherry theme, and um, what's the winning formula for the wine, for the entree, other than um, perpetual sunny days throughout the summer? Do you know, I think there's a generational shift. I think people of a certain age remember Harvey's Bristol Cream and not necessarily happily. Now I've got no problem with Harvey's Bristol Cream. I think you know it's a good glass of cream sherry. Um, and I think there's a new generation of people who, young people, who, who, have, who have none of that. They have no conception about that. So they they're open to it. And they don't know anything about it, but I think if you start talking about Harvey's Bristol Cream, it doesn't mean anything. I did, I did some work a couple of years ago for the Sherry Institute training restaurant staff and we found that in, if you gave a group of people six different sherries, there's always one they like. And uh, what's happening with Spanish wines within the on-trade? What's popular? The on-trade is much more open again. Um, there's no getting past the fact that 60% of, of um, Spanish wines sold in the UK is Rioja. Good luck. But it means that I think the entree need to be a little bit clever. So if you just think, oh, I can have the cheapest Rioja I can get my hands on and that'll make people happy, it's a bit like cheap Pinot Grigio. I think you're not doing your customers a favour and you're not doing yourself a favour. So talking, uh, continuing with the on-trade, what other trends have you sort of be noticed or become visibly aware of over the last year or two? Spanish wine or...? No, not, not just generally. I think... Um, the whole carafe thing is really exciting. I think it's still it's still actually I think it gets more press coverage than in fact it deserves, or it, not that it deserves, but it reflects the amount of action. But I think there's still enough people doing interesting things with by the glass and carafes, and I think that's fantastic because it gives people a chance to try new wines. It gives people a chance to, to perhaps spend a bit more. You know, if if, if money's tight and someone's going to lunch and they don't want to buy an expensive bottle of wine, you can actually have a good glass of wine. If, you, if the, if the restaurateur is smart enough to offer good wines by the glass, I think they can, they can actually find, that, that can be commercially very successful. OK, and what about the situation with wholesalers now? Are we sort of, have we shrunk um, down to about sort of key five or six wholesalers? I think what's, there's always a dynamism. Yes, there are, you know, if I'm doing a wine just for somebody, Generally speaking, if people are using my services, they don't want too many suppliers. So, yeah, there are there's that four or five usual suspects that I might use two or three in any particular occasion. But I think there's lots of new startups, lots of small companies. People either they're just young and passionate, or they have a particular focus. However, it's not sort of cost effective for a hotel or a restaurant to have sort of more than sort of three or four wholesalers. I personally wouldn't choose to have that many, but um, it, it's it's a decision he makes. He his boss lets him, Mr. Samelia, his boss, boss lets him do it. I would say, um, I I don't like the idea of single sole supply. I think you don't. I don't think you necessarily get better value. I think you you think you do, but you don't. And you certainly, if you have a sole supplier, they get they get complacent. So I think it's good to have uh, a number of um, suppliers. Now the key question is. Are consumers more educated than they were 10 years ago? Uh, a little. Thank you, Peter.